let's get ready to rumble! What up, y'all? Today is Throwdown Thursday, where we're talking about sports betting. We got NFL going on, we got college football, we got NBA Finals, and tons of other stuff going on. Let's get into it. So last week, I made a bunch of recommendations for picks, but I only actually settled on three. I took the Panthers, the Seahawks, and the Packers, and they all covered for me. So this record, going from negative to positive, baby. I'm in the black. Let's go ahead and recap some of the games from last week and update our power rankings for the NFL. So the Broncos and Jets played in the classic Thursday night who cares game where the Broncos ran away with it. The Broncos aren't the best team in the league, but the Jets are definitely the worst team in the league. Things are only getting worse. It won't be long until Adam Gase gets the boot. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave the power rankings the way they are, though, with the Jets at the bottom of the league and the Broncos at plus five and a half. I mean, the Broncos covered against the Jets, but so what? Bengals beat the Jags 33-25. to I have no idea how the Jags got to win the first week, but they've definitely panned out to be the kind of the team they thought we were going to be. Bengals, on the other hand, finally got that win. Joe Burrow's been playing awesome. Uh, A.J. Green, it's good to see him back again. And T. Higgins is definitely a monster. Uh, their tight end sample seems to be a playmaker as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Jags and add a half point to their power ranking. I'm going to go ahead and knock the Bengals down a half point, get them up even with the Broncos. The Browns took it to the Cowboys last week. The Browns definitely looked like they were going to blow that game, and the Cowboys looked like they were going to make another miraculous comeback like they did against the Falcons. Cowboys defense looks terrible. Dak and the boys look good only when they're down by like three touchdowns. I had the Cowboys as one of the better teams in the league, but after going one and three, there's no way we can keep them there. After going a quarter of the way through the season, they just do not look like a good team. If anything, they look average. And if anything, they got a bunch of talent on offense at least. But that defense is awful and they keep turning the ball over. They just look sloppy. So I'm going to give them a huge dip and send them down to zero. And if they keep playing like the way they have, then they're going to be in the poop group in no time. Browns, on the other hand, were in the poop group. But hey, they're three and one now. But their story is kind of similar to the Cowboys. They have a good offense, a lot of talent. Their defense is not very good. Their safety, Sandejo, is an absolute liability for giving up big plays. But because they got the win and they're 3-1, and one, I'm going to go ahead and bump them up a couple slots. And we're going to make them a little bit better than the Cowboys after that win. Saints took care of business against the Lions. Lions came out to a strong lead, but then Drew Brees and the boys just went ahead and took care of business. Saints have been banged up a lot too, so it's definitely credit to them for you know keeping it going despite having so many injuries. I already had the Saints as one of the best teams in the league, and because of those injuries, I'm not gonna give them any bump. I mean, they beat the Lions, big whoop. They did cover. Typically, I would give them a half point bump, but not really that impressed. And the Lions, I mean, they're just a show of sadness. I'm going to go ahead and put them even with the Broncos and Bengals. Seahawks took care of business on the road. The Dolphins seems like they had everything going for them. Seahawks had to travel all the way across the country to an eastern time zone. Had to play a little bit earlier than their body clock is ready for. Regardless, Russell Wilson's a monster. DJ Metcalf looks like he was created in a laboratory. I mean, this dude is absolute beast and even though the Seahawks aren't as strong as they were on defense especially with Jamal Adams out they still get it done I'm gonna go ahead and give the Seahawks that half point bump and the Dolphins already got near the bottom of the league I don't know if I'm gonna drop them yet they have been playing tough and competitive I mean who doesn't like Fitzmagic with that beard still running around making plays on the field he's throwing he's running I like watching them they seem more competitive than Dolphins teams in the past that were you know absolutely garbage Ravens took care of business against a really poor Washington team. I love Haskins. I'm a Ohio State fan, but he's not the guy, and he's getting benched this week. With Kyle Allen in, he actually might be better than Haskins, so maybe that'll help him out. I'm leaving the Ravens where they are, one point behind the Chiefs. I think that's where they deserve to be. And the Skins are getting the half-point bump, or actually getting a half-point deficit down to be tied with the Giants. Panthers got a good win against the Cardinals. The Cardinals have been a fan favorite because Kyler Murray is fun to watch and DeAndre Hopkins is a pass-catching machine. But they still turn the ball over. Kyler Murray still makes young QB mistakes. And I don't know, that defense isn't anything special. We're going to go ahead and bump the cards down to even. And after that Panthers performance and performances from past weeks, they're on a two-game winning streak against the Chargers and the Cards. 
Got to give them a little bit of a bump. They were at plus three. I'm not going to get too crazy. I'm going to move them up to plus two. Uh, they're going to be in the poop group uh, with the other teams that seem like they have something going on. Just haven't put it together yet. Uh, Panthers are definitely on a team on the rise, though. In the battle to not go 0-4, the Vikings take down the Texans, and Bill O'Brien gets axed. So the Texans, was with being 0-4 and losing their coach, I got to give them a, a huge discount. We're going to send them down to plus floor, right between the, uh, the poop group and the Lions. Vikes, on the other hand, since they did get the cover, I mean, it was against an underperforming Texans team, but they did get the cover. I'm going to give them a half point bump. That's the best I can do. They're kind of like the Browns and the Cowboys. They got a bunch of players on offense. They got Thielen. They got Dalvin Cook, one of the best uh, running backs in the league. Uh, Rudolph, their tight end, makes crazy catches. They lost just too much on defense last year, and it's showing. They just don't really seem like they can stop a lot of people, especially good offenses. Rams got the cover against the Giants, but again, being a team like the Giants, who's out Saquon Barkley and never really had a good offensive line in the first place, is kind of whatever. It is actually kind of underwhelming that the Rams only got 17 points, but I still think they're a real strong team with a lot of talent. And I just don't think that's enough to give them a bump. Giants, on the other hand, just keep looking worse and worse every week, and it's going to be a matter of time before the players just quit on the season. Like, they have no chance this year. I'm going to go ahead and put them below the Jags. Buffalo Bills are for real taking down the Raiders. Uh, that was a really interesting game. Bills got a defense. They got a QB. They got a ball player, wide receiver, and Stefan Diggs. Bills look good. So I'm going to give the Bills a half point bump. Put them ahead of the Rams, especially since they beat the Rams the previous week. And since the Raiders didn't get the cover, I'm just going to bump them down a half point. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers got it done. Chargers are a pretty tough team with a tough defense. I mean, they got Bosa and Ingram coming off the edge. But Tom Brady was just too much. So actually scoring 38 points against the Chargers is pretty impressive in my opinion. I don't think the Chiefs scored that much against them in previous weeks. Chargers looked good at first. Um, Herbert's been playing really well for a rookie, but they still just don't really have enough right now. So we're going to make the Bucks minus six with the Bills. And then the, we're going to knock the Chargers down a half point for not getting the cover. So the spread on that game was about seven, seven and a half. And it was pretty much a push at that point. So I'm not going to change the power ratings on those teams. The Colts moved on their way up to three and one. Their defense looks great. Bears, even with having Nick Foles in there, wasn't enough for that, that stout Colts defense. I think Foles is definitely the better option than Trubisky moving forward. I mean, I have eyes and I watch the game, so... I. I'm done with Trubisky. Ever since the Colts blew it against the Jags week one, they've looked strong. Colts are going to get a half point bump. Bears are kind of where I thought they would be in the plus two poop group. So we're going to go ahead and just keep them there. Eagles finally got a win. They look good against a banged up 49ers team though. Um, Niners are just not going to be the same right now. 49ers are crazy banged up right now. I mean, they still got Kittle. They still got use check, but I don't know how many games you can win with just a really good tight end and fullback. You need more than that. Nick Bosa's out for the year. They've missed, they've lost D-lineman from last year. It's just not the same team that it was last year. So I had the 49ers as one of the best teams in the league, but I definitely have to start fading them right now. We're going to go ahead and put them down to minus five for a two-point loss, which puts them right between the Colts and the Pats now. Since the Eagles did finally get a win, we're going to go ahead and take them out of the poop group. Chiefs took care of business against the Patriots, who obviously didn't have Cam Newton. I'm really surprised with how well the Patriots' defense played, especially since they're missing, you know, Hightower and some other players on defense because they decided to sit out for the year. So not a bad loss for the Patriots. I don't think I'm going to change their power rating at all and i already have the chiefs as the best team in the league there's really no point in changing them either packers took care of the falcons pretty easily rogers looks like the old rogers the team's flying around i'm gonna give a packers a half point bump for just looking impressive not only this past week but from weeks prior and this falcons team is a mess it's only a matter of time before dan quinn's out of there we're going to go ahead and put them below the Panthers. So here is the updated power rankings. I'll go ahead and put this in the description if you want to reference it. Let's go ahead and take a look at this week's line in the NFL. Tonight we got the Bears hosting the Bucks. Bucks got the eighth best scoring offense in the league while Chicago's in the bottom third. Bucks actually have a top 10 defense, which you wouldn't think. And the Bears are you know, still the Bears. They still got a pretty decent defense at seventh. Mike Evans is kind of banged up. Fournette's doubtful. OJ Howard's out for the season. Godwin's out. So I got the Bucks at minus five and a half for their power ranking and the Bears at plus two. I'm giving the Bucks a plus two for their injuries. 
giving Bears a half a point for their injuries, giving a minus one for being at home. So my spread on the game is about four. Vegas has their spread anywhere from four to three, depending on what, on what book you're looking at. So probably going to pass on that game. Next up, we got the Titans hosting the, the Bills. That game is probably going to be postponed because all of the Titans players have the cooties now. So we'll skip that one. Next up is Texans hosting the Jags. Jags and the Texans have two of the worst offenses in the league and two of the worst defenses. Teams aren't very good. Houston has Conley, their corner on the IR. Neither team has too many injuries, so no points added there. I got the Texans at plus four. I got the Jags at plus seven and a half. They get minus one for being at home. The spread I have on this game is Jags getting two and a half. Texans opened up as a nine point favorite. Now it's been changed to six pretty much at every book. I have no reason to bet on the Texans right now. And I don't mind the Jags getting points like that to a bad team against the Texans. So I'm definitely looking at the Jags on Sunday. Next, we got the Chiefs hosting the Raiders. Chiefs only have the ninth best scoring offense in the league right now, which is pretty surprising. And the Raiders aren't far behind them. Defensively, the Raiders <clears throat> are one of the worst in the league, and surprisingly, the Chiefs have one of the better defenses in the league. Raiders have a lot of people that are questionable. Look out for that. Chiefs don't really have any injury issues. I mean, how lucky are these guys going to get, right? So my spread on the game is Chiefs by 9.5. Vegas opened up at 12.5, and, and now it's 13 in most, most places. While my spread tells me that I should take the Raiders... My brain tells me to never, ever, ever bet against Patrick Mahomes. Next up, we got the Jets hosting the Cards. Even though the Cards are exciting on offense with Kyler Murray and Hopkins, they're only the 21st scoring team in the league. And of course, the Jets are one of the worst scoring teams in the league. Although, even to my surprise, the Cards have one of the better scoring defenses in the league. But they do give up a high yards per play, so that could be deceiving. And the Jets are the Jets. Looks like the cards don't have too many injury issues. Blacko is expected to start. Might be an upgrade from Darnold. Might not. Bell is questionable. So I got the cards winning by nine. Vegas opened up at eight and a half, but now it's at right around a touchdown. There is some value on the cards there according to my numbers, but I don't know if Cardinals are a good enough team to be laying a touchdown against anybody, even the Jets. Although I'll probably be at the end of the day Sunday wondering why I don't bet against the Jets every single week, regardless of what the spread is. That team's about to give up. Next, we got the Falcons hosting the Panthers. Both teams have been pretty average on offense, and Atlanta has one of the worst defenses in the league. Eli Apple looks banged up for the Panthers, and of course, McCaffrey's on the IR. Falcons have some people that are questionable, but no major injuries. So I got the Panthers at plus two, and the Falcons at plus three, but then minus one at home, so it's basically just a pick em. Vegas has the Falcons minus one at home. I mean, this line's pretty much straight on, so I'm probably going to pass on this one. Next up, we got the Skins hosting the Rams. Rams have been pretty average on offense, while the Skins have been bad. Although the Rams do have one of the best defenses in the league, and the Skins are just not very good. Cam Akers is upgraded to probable running back for the Rams. Skins have a variety of people that have been questionable or on the IR. Chase Young was out last game. He's questionable for this game, and Kyle Allen's the starter. So I got the Rams at minus five and a half and the skins at plus seven. Then I'm giving them a minus one for being at home. So my spread on the game is Rams by 11 and a half. This game opened up with Rams at minus five and a half and now it's at a touchdown. Typically don't like taking touchdown favorites on the road, but with COVID it almost doesn't matter. And I just really haven't seen anything great from the skins this year. So I got no problem putting money on the Rams. Next up, we got the Battle of Pennsylvania. Eagles have one of the worst offenses in the league, while Pitt is just right outside the top 10. Eagles are just kind of an average defense, and Pitt has the most dangerous front seven in the league right now, especially with Watt and Dupree coming off the edge. Eagles got have tons of injuries, <clears throat> while the Steelers are looking pretty healthy. I got the Eagles at plus one and a half. And then I give them an extra point for the amount of injuries they have. Steelers are minus six and a half. Then I'm giving them a minus one for being at home. So my spread on this game is Steelers by 10. Vegas opened this game at seven and has pretty much kept it like that the whole time. I'm pretty high on the Steelers right now. Laying a touchdown against the Eagles kind of makes me nervous, which means it's probably a good bet. 
I'm taking the Steelers. Next up, we have the Bengals at the Ravens. Bengals have been struggling on offense, even though they got a lot of their weapons back and Burrow's been playing well. That offensive line just apparently doesn't like anybody. And the Ravens obviously still had a strong offense. Bengals have been pretty mediocre on defense, which is better than I thought they would be. And Baltimore has one of the best defenses in the league. Since he has some people on the IR, so we have the Bengals at plus five and a half. We have the Ravens at minus nine, and I give them a minus one. For being at home my spread on the game is ravens by 15 and a half this line opened up at 14 now it's down to 13 and even 12 and a half in some places that line's pretty spot on i mean i have the ravens a little bit higher but a two touchdown favorite in the nfl especially against a conference opponent i'm not going to take the Bengals, but i'm probably just going to stay off this one next up we got the niners hosting the dolphins dolphins have one of the worst scoring offenses in the league despite all their injuries the 49ers have one of the better offenses Miami's defense is surprisingly better than people think, and despite losing the D-line and having that dominant defense, the Niners are still number three in scoring defense and number two in yards per play. Maybe I'm sandbagging the Niners' defense a little bit. Dolphins don't seem to have too many injury issues, while the Niners, their whole team is in the emergency room. I got the Dolphins at plus seven and the Niners at minus five and then minus one for being at home. I would typically give them uh, extra points for having injuries, but I already factored that into their power rankings, so there's no point in doing it twice. So my spread on the game is still Niners by 13. This game actually opened up with the Niners favored by 13, and then it's been moved to nine. Looks like I should hop on the Niners right here, and I might, even though they have injuries. I love Kyle Shanahan. He's been doing a killer job, and apparently they have a better defense than I even realized. That's a pretty big spread, considering they have all those injuries. Next up is a battle for the NFC least, I mean NFC East. Giants have the worst offense in the league, and they don't have Saquon Barkley. Cowboys are third in the league in points and third in the league in yards per play, but they always get that at the second half when they're down by a bunch, not in the first half when they can actually get some momentum and get a good lead. The Giants have the worst offense in the league. The Cowboys have the worst defense in the league. Shepard's on the IR. Pepper's questionable. The boys are still missing a bunch of people. So I got the Giants at plus eight and the Cowboys at zero. Give them a point for being at home, but then taking away that point for being banged up. I got the Cowboys winning by eight. Vegas opened up with Cowboys by seven and a half, and now it's moved to nine and a half. Numbers tell me I should take the Giants, but I can find better ways to lose my money. Hard pass. Next up, we got the Browns hosting the Colts. Colts have an average offense, while the Browns are actually matching their talent right now with being the fourth best scoring offense in the league. Believe it or not, the Indianapolis Colts have the best defense in the league. Number one in scoring, number one in passing yards allowed, and number one in yards per play. And on the flip side, the Browns have one of the worst defenses in the league. Colts have a handful of people on the IR and questionable. Chubb is out for the season with the Browns. And Joku looks like he's probable. So we got the Colts at minus five and a half, and I'm giving them plus half a point for their injuries. And then the Browns at minus half a point, and then minus one for being at home. So my spread on the game is Colts minus three and a half. This line opened up with the Browns as a one point favorite. It's been flipped to being a one and a half point underdog. Yeah, I mean, I know the Browns got a good win and they're three and one right now, but this Colts defense is for real and the Browns defense is terrible. I got no problem betting against the Browns. For the Sunday night matchup, we got the Seahawks hosting the Vikings. Vikings are right in the middle of the road on offense while the Seahawks are killing it with Wilson right now. Number two in scoring and number two in yards per play. Vikes have one of the worst defenses in the league and Seahawks are just kind of mediocre on defense. Yeah, the Vikings are still missing a lot of people on defense and Jamal Adams is still out for the Seahawks with a groin injury. I got the Vikes at plus one and a half. I got the Seahawks at minus eight. I gave them a minus one for being at home, but I'm giving them plus one for having Jamal Adams out. So I have the Vikes winning by nine and a half on this one. Vegas opened up this line with Seahawks by nine, and now it's moved down to seven. I'm betting on Russell Wilson again for sure. And then the Monday night matchup, we got the Saints hosting the Chargers. Even though Herbert's been playing well, the Chargers still don't score a lot of points. Saints, on the other hand, are always the Saints and always in the top ten in offense. Defensively, the Chargers are right outside the top 10, and even though the Saints have a bunch of talent on defense, they're always in the bottom in scoring. Chargers are still missing Chris Harris. Eckler's going to be out for the next four to six weeks. Saints have a bunch of people questionable. Nothing too big, though. 
I got the Chargers at dead even and then plus one for their injuries. And I got the Saints at minus seven and then minus one for being at home. That Superdome just is not the same as it used to be with COVID going on right now. So my spread on the game is Saints by nine. Vegas opened up at seven and a half and now it's moved to eight. I got New Orleans with a slight edge, but I'm probably going to pass on that game. That's a pretty big spread. I don't think the Chargers are that bad of a team. The line's about right. So to recap, these are the games I'm looking at for the week. I don't know if I'm going to take all of these. I'm going to probably wait till Sunday to fire on them, see how things play out, especially with injuries. Next up, we got college football. So last week was my first week of actually betting on college football. I went three and three. I don't really have a power ranking system for college football. Too many teams. I'm really just shooting from the hip on this. All right, we got the Red River Shootout this week. Texas lost to TCU last week, but beat Texas Tech the week before. They didn't cover either of those, though. Oklahoma disappointed me. They lost to Iowa State and get Kansas State on back-to-back -back weeks. They are clearly not the team they've been in the past. This game opened up as Oklahoma minus three, but now it's down to two. I've watched Oklahoma this year, and they just don't look that impressive. They don't have that stud QB like they've had for the last few years. I'll take a shot on Texas. Virginia's hosting NC State. NC State beat Pitt in a close one last week, but lost to Virginia Tech. Actually got smoked by Virginia Tech the week before. Virginia beat Duke and then kind of got hammered by Clemson, but at least they covered. Virginia's actually 2-0 against the spread. Virginia covered for me last week. I kind of like them. Uh, NC State got hammered by Virginia Tech a couple weeks ago. With this line being under 10 points at minus 8.5, I'll go ahead and take a shot on Virginia. We got the Bulldogs hosting Tennessee after their big win against Auburn last week. Tennessee's 2-0 beating South Carolina and Missouri. They pushed against Carolina, but they handled Missouri. Georgia, on the other hand, just looks like a wrecking crew. I mean, they destroyed Auburn and they look good against Arkansas. So this line opened up at 14 and a half, but it's moved to 12 and a half. I'm inclined to take the points in this one with Tennessee. But Georgia looked really good last week in the first half against Auburn. I don't know if Tennessee is better than Auburn. Probably not. If this game gets moved up to a 14-point spread with two touchdowns, I might take Tennessee, but otherwise I'm probably going to stay off. Next, we got Texas A&M hosting Florida. Florida's 2-0, beat the crap out of Ole Miss and handled South Carolina pretty well. They were a 15-point favorite against South Carolina, but they missed the cover by a point. Texas A&M, on the other hand, got absolutely steamrolled by Alabama. And they beat Vandy the week before, but they were 31 and a half point favorites and only won by five. Texas A&M is a seven or six and a half point underdog. I'm definitely taking Florida on this one. They seem to be a way better team than A&M. And if that line moves down to six and a half and stays there, I'm taking it twice. We got Auburn hosting Arkansas this week. Arkansas actually beat Mississippi State last week, which is a surprise since Mississippi State just came off smacking LSU around. They got housed by Georgia the week before, although they did cover by a point. We already talked about Auburn. They look decent, but Georgia was clearly the better team last week. They did get the cover against UK the week before. 13-point spread on this game seems about right, so I'm probably going to pass on this one. We got TCU hosting Kansas State. Kansas State's coming off two big wins against Texas Tech and Oklahoma. TCU also coming off a big win against Texas, even though they lost to Iowa State previous week, although they did cover in that game against Iowa State. It seems like TCU's a pretty big favorite over Kansas State. I mean, I'm almost inclined to take Kansas State right away. I wonder if they have an injury. It looks like Kansas State's quarterback was banged up, so he's probable for this week, but he is playing, and they do have a wide receiver that's out. Yeah, this one's pretty interesting. I don't mind Kansas State getting that many points, especially against a TCU team that's just kind of whatever. So I'm going to be looking at Kansas State in this one. Probably be a game day decision on Saturday. We got Alabama playing at Ole Miss. Listen, I don't need to do any research on this game. I have a very simple betting rule. Always bet on Alabama. If God forbid they don't cover for some reason, just double up your bet the next week. Simple as that. They covered the week before. They covered last week. They always get these monster spreads that they have to cover, and they usually do it. Mississippi State's going to be playing at Kentucky. Mississippi State looked good against LSU, the reigning champs, the first week, but then they lost to Arkansas last week. Kentucky, on the other hand, is 0-2. They lost to Ole Miss last week. The spread on this game is Kentucky minus 2. I don't think Kentucky's that good. And Mississippi State, they got the Pirate. And at least they showed some promise against LSU. So I'll take a couple points with the Bulldogs from Mississippi State. We got Clemson hosting the Hurricanes. That'll be a big matchup. Miami beat Louisville the first week in a big game. And then they absolutely wrecked Florida State last week, which isn't that impressive because Florida State looks terrible. Clemson handled the Citadel like they should. And they beat Virginia pretty badly. They didn't get the cover because it was 28 points. 
In my opinion, Clemson's clearly the better team than the Hurricanes until proven otherwise. They didn't cover the big spread last week, but when they're playing a team like Virginia and you're drilling them in the first half, it's easy to kind of let your foot off the gas in the second half. The Hurricanes, on the other hand, I feel like the Tigers will actually respect them and come out all out against them. So the Tigers are a two touchdown favorite, but I like betting on good teams, especially like Clemson. I think they'll be amped up for a competitive, tough opponent to fight for the ACC. I'm going with Dabo this week. Bring your own guts. Notre Dame is hosting Florida State this week. Florida State won a tough one against Jacksonville State, but lost to the Hurricanes and Georgia Tech the two weeks previous. Notre Dame's on a three-game winning streak, and they're 2-1 and one against the spread. Notre Dame is a 21-point favorite in this game. The Florida State's look pretty bad so far this year, and Notre Dame's look solid like they typically do. Um, I'm kind of inclined to take Notre Dame, but that's a big spread, so I think I might end up just passing on this one. And then we got LSU and Missouri playing at 9 on Saturday. Missouri's 0-2 so far this year. They've got smoked in both games. LSU got surprised by Mississippi State, but they did handle Vandy last week pretty easily getting the cover. So yeah, this game opened up at 19. Now it's down to 14. I don't know, 14 probably seems about right. I almost want to lean on Missouri, but they don't show like they are that good and lsu is clearly not the team they were last year probably gonna pass on that one all right that's it for college football check out the nba finals so the lakers opened up as a five and a half point favorite it's now up to seven and a half seven dragic is doubtful for friday but bam looks like he's gonna be ready to go and the lakers are healthy so the lakers were a seven and a half point favorite last week and in case you missed it tyler hero buried a three that was irrelevant with no time left on the clock to get the cover for the Heat. If you watch that game, the Heat were actually playing pretty close. Lakers started to pull away at the end. They looked like they were going to get the cover, but I mean, that line seemed pretty much right. This is going to be an elimination game for the Heat. That line's pretty much been around seven or eight all series the Lakers' as favorites. In elimination games, teams typically play a little bit harder because they don't want to go home. They're trying to win. And since this line started at five and a half and moved up to seven, I'm probably going to take the Heat on Friday night. They got to keep it within seven, maybe even get the win. Big ups to LeBron and AD, though. Everybody was wondering how that was going to work out this year. I mean, everybody knew that they were going to be good, but there were definitely some people uh, suspect whether or not they could bring it home or not. The Lakers looked like the best team before COVID hit. They looked like the best team in the playoffs. They deserve to be champs. I'm still taking Jordan over LeBron, though. All right, let's look at some other st random stuff to bet on. All right, so when it comes down to the election... Democrats are at minus 190 with Republicans at plus 145. When it comes to the popular vote, Democrats are minus 600, which means they're probably going to win the popular vote pretty easily. And then you can already make bets on who's going to be the 2024 Democratic candidate. AOC and Joe Biden are the favorites right now with Kamala Harris slightly behind them. Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are still in the mix. And they keep putting Michelle Obama in there, but I don't know if she's ever going to run. So it looks like the Mike Tyson Roy Jones fight is scheduled for Saturday, November 28th. Right now they got Tyson in about a two to one favorite. Jones getting plus 150. I have no idea why these knuckleheads want to step in the ring again. They must be needing some money or something. While I love watching Mike Tyson's greatest hits on ESPN where they show like his first 20 fights and he beats everybody in the first round. This is not the Mike Tyson that we're going to see. We're going to see old Mike Tyson. We're going to see old Roy Jones. While I'm excited for the names in the fight, I feel like in real life it's going to be pretty depressing, but I'm still going to watch it. I don't know who I would take in this right now. I mean, it's kind of a toss up. So my natural theory there is just to take the underdog, but I will go ahead and keep tracking that with these weeks to come. And then for the national election, I do have a ticket on Biden that I got back in 2018 for 18 to 1 on my money. He is the favorite right now. He has a little bit of bump in the polls after the debate. It seems like Biden's trending up while Trump's trending down. Again, that's just over the general population. When it comes down to electoral college, it's still kind of a toss up. I love 538 because they give you a forecast of, of what's going to happen and how each president could win. They were the only ones that actually gave... Uh, Trump a chance in the 2016 election. But right now, they're giving Biden about an 85% chance to win with Trump only 15%. So my bet's looking pretty good. Um, there's not enough juice when it comes to uh, betting on the Republicans right now to probably make your money worth it. Again, I don't really care who wins. I don't really have a dog in the fight. I don't, I'm not part of the Bloods or the Crips. So I just find betting on the election to be highly entertaining. 
All right, y'all, that's it for this week and Throwdown Thursday. I appreciate you for tuning in. If you like my picks, definitely go ahead and follow along. If you think I'm an idiot, feel free to comment and tell me why I'm wrong. I have no problem arguing with random people over the internet. I can't wait for this weekend in sports. May the gambling gods bless you. Just make sure you can make rent this week. All right, y'all, thank you for tuning in. Until next time.